My friend Samantha and I were so excited to take a road trip together to go hiking somewhere further from home. We'd been talking about it since we graduated college a few years back and finally found the time. Well, she always made the time. It was mainly me that had trouble balancing work with anything else. Looking back now, I wish I had spent more of this trip focusing on Sam, the scenery, and being present in the moment. I wish I had been a better friend. Sam was the most excited for our trip. The week before we left, she was texting me about restaurants in the area, stuff to do. She even made a Spotify playlist with both of our favorites so we could listen to seven hours worth of eclectic mix of classic rock, pop, and black metal, and was making trailheads we might enjoy on her Google Maps app. I felt bad for putting the trip off for so long. We got to catch up, explore, try cool food. We had a great trip up until our final hike. We're both in decent shape, and since we had the supplies and plenty of daylight, we decided we were going to try a longer, unpaved trail that went around this beautiful lake. It was the last hike of our trip, and we decided to take a more difficult and less crowded trail. Initially, it was a wonderful hike. The water was such a surreal shade of blue, and the pine trees and rolling hills were breathtaking. The air was thinner than we were used to, but so refreshing. As we hiked around one bend, I almost ran into Sam's back. I'd been falling behind focusing on placing my feet in exactly the right locations in the soft dirt so I didn't go sliding down 20 feet to the shore. Sam stood frozen, a deer in front of her blocking the trail. As I approached with my backpack jingling and breathing heavily, the deer stood for a moment more, tilting its head sideways at me before darting back into the pines. She looked back at me, her face tight, did you see that? The deer? Yeah, it was pretty magical. She gave a little laugh as she started up again, so we could both move on to the section of the trail that had sturdier footing. No, I, I mean, something was wrong with that deer. It was way too comfortable around me, and I don't know if you could see or hear it, but... It was drooling and making these weird sounds. We continued on in silence after that as we focused on our footing and the scenery, stopping every so often to take pictures. One time, when we were stopped, we heard rustling to our right, higher up on the hill. I got the bear spray out and held on to it. It seemed to be walking parallel to us, roughly matching our pace. It sounded big, too. Eventually, the hiking trail rose to meet the higher part of the hill, and I couldn't help but sigh in relief. I'd been so worried I'd roll my ankle and tumble down the mountain, so it was good to have some room so I wasn't walking right on the edge. Back in college, I'd sprained my ankle badly, but couldn't afford to see a doctor. It healed a bit oddly, and since then, my left ankle has been iffy. After a while, I needed to sit for a moment, walking uphill for an hour in addition to the 6,500 foot elevation, I was struggling. Maybe I'm also a bit more out of shape than I'd been willing to admit, too. Sam sat with me for a moment, but then saw some wildflowers about ten feet into the woods and left to go take a quick picture. With her gone, I felt a sudden chill. Something was watching me. Sam! 
I called out nervously as the rustling grew louder, and I gripped my container of bear spray tightly. It stepped out of the woods, and... It was just a deer. Or, more specifically, it was the deer. The same one that Sam had encountered. Now that she had pointed it out, I could see what she was saying. The deer had no issues approaching me. It was scrawny, walked slowly, but like it had a bit too much to drink, and it was definitely drooling. I jumped up and waved my arms at it. <laughs> Go away! I knew it was sick and the poor thing was confused and probably suffering, but it creeped me the hell out. It cocked its head and seemed to be studying me, looking me up and down. It approached me and made some sort of gasping sound. It was opening and closing its mouth in a way which deeply unsettled me for some reason. <laughs> Sam! She came running towards me from the woods, and when I turned back, it had gone. <laughs> Are you okay? What happened? The creepy deer was back. I know it sounds silly, but I think it's been following us. I told her how it had been behaving. Do you think it's rabid? Poor baby, she said sympathetically. Possibly? Or I wondered if it has CWD. Either way... We should probably let the park rangers know just in case. We had decided we'd stick together, but after a few miles, she ended up ahead of me again. She tends to inch forward to get pictures, whereas I tend to walk past sights, then have regrets and double back to take pictures. I had walked back a bit and was sitting down angling my phone weirdly to try and fit the scene in front of me in the frame, when I heard Sam's voice, but I couldn't make out what she was saying. Hey, I'll, I'll be right there, I said, my voice raised slightly, assuming she was talking to me. Then she screamed, Sam! I stood up and tried to walk as quickly and carefully as possible. Her screaming changed from fear to agony, and it sounded like she was sobbing. I wasn't sure what happened, but I could tell she was scared and likely hurt. I suddenly realized I was still holding our only canister of bear spray. Against my better judgment, I started running as fast as I could and for a while I was making good time, but then my left foot landed a patch of soft dirt at the edge of the trail. My ankle rolled, and I was falling. I don't remember hitting the ground, but I remember opening my eyes, flat on my back, about 15 feet below where I had been standing. It was also dark outside. We'd started hiking at least six or seven hours before sunset, I tried to stand, but it was a struggle. I was confused, disoriented. Trying to get up was taking all my energy and focus. I had a deep feeling of dread I couldn't explain. As I started slowly moving upwards on my hands and knees, I tried to recall what had happened leading up to my fall. Sam sounded hurt. She was screaming. I had run after her, and then I fell. Shit. Sam. I called her name. My voice hoarse, but no response. My phone was surprisingly only minorly damaged, but I had no reception. Luckily, since it had been buckled to me, I still had our backpack. 
I dug through it. We had first aid kits, but I figured I could patch myself up later. I didn't want to stay down here any longer than I had to. I found my knife and my headlamp. After about 20 minutes, I had slowly and painfully ascended back towards where I had fallen from. My hands were raw, and I could feel my right knee bleeding through my pants. I was trying to go slowly, since I trusted my feet even less now, and dizziness was starting to creep in. But panic and fear drove me forward. Once I made it back to the trail, I had to sit for a moment. I heard rustling behind me and felt a sudden pang of fear. Something or someone had injured Sam, and here I was sitting alone, injured, with my back to the woods, in the dark. I tried calling her name, in case it was her that I had heard. No response. I stood up and started limping as quickly as possible towards the direction that I had last heard her scream. Luckily, the ground had evened out, because I could feel myself weaving unsteadily. I knew that something terrible may have happened to her, but kept trying to keep that thought out of my mind. As my calls to her remained unanswered, and it became harder to imagine a scenario in which she was okay, I felt my throat tighten, and tears rolled down my cheeks. I kept looking for her. I knew she wouldn't just leave me here. I think part of me knew then that she was gone. She would have been searching for me if she was okay, and even if she left to get help, I think they would have found me by then. Somehow, eventually I navigated my way to where I thought she had last been. I was hoping maybe if she was injured, she was okay and just out of it and confused like I was. My foot caught in the mud and I fell. Lights flashed behind my eyelids and I felt overcome with nausea. The lights from my headlamp had greatly dimmed as it was now coated in mud and grime. I heard movement behind me. As the smell hit me, I realized the mud was dirt mixed with blood. I could taste it, mixed with the gritty texture. Leaves covered with what was likely blood stuck to my face, and I felt something soft and wet under my shoulder. The rustling behind me became discernible as footsteps. I felt around for my knife, my bear spray, but instead felt something hard, sticky. I was certain I had just found out what happened to Sam, and had a good guess at what was about to happen next to me. I felt no urge to get up as the footsteps got closer. I knew I couldn't outrun it. I closed my eyes trying to focus on something, anything else, not knowing if I wanted to see what was coming for me. The footsteps stopped, and I could hear labored breathing coming from above me. I waited. And then as no blows came, I opened my eyes. It was Sam. She stood over me, breathing heavily from her mouth. She was covered in blood. Her shirt and pants were torn. But she was alive. I let out a relieved sob and then could no longer hold back the tears. Oh my god! I whispered, as I slowly moved to sitting, and then standing. I thought I'd lost you. 
I pulled her close to me into a hug. She stood motionless, her arms at her side. She stuck to me where her shirt was still a bit wet. Dried blood covered the neck of her shirt and her midsection. Her hands and, unsettlingly, her mouth were also smeared with blood. I could still hear her breathing heavily close to my ear. What happened? I asked as I released her. She stared at me, but didn't respond. I figured she was a bit traumatized. Frankly, I wasn't sure how she was up and standing at all after what had happened. She was a bit wobbly, but otherwise seemed to be able to walk. As we walked towards the car, she fell behind me, which made me nervous as I didn't want to leave her out of my sight. She kept stopping, staring over her shoulder, while I tried to coax her forward. Eventually, after what felt like forever, we made it back. My ankle was killing me, but I had tried to move as fast as possible. Although the woods were eerily silent, I wanted to get out of there as fast as possible. When we got to her car, I was debating if we should drive ourselves to the hospital or call 911. I had this feeling of terror that I couldn't shake. I pictured us making it all the way here to the car and then something breaking the windows, attacking us. I decided we needed to leave now. Do you have your keys? Do you think you can drive? I asked. She had an old Jeep pickup and was very sensitive about other people driving her baby. Plus, I wasn't sure I could drive us with my ankle as it was. She said nothing, cocked her head at me. I know, we look like we've been mauled by a bear. I caught myself and winced, feeling suddenly insensitive. She clearly had been attacked by something or someone. When she said nothing, displayed no emotion or reaction, I cautiously continued. But I have a bad feeling. I think we need to leave, like, right now. I'd rather call for help when we're back on the main road or just drive straight to the hospital. She remained motionless, staring back into the woods and I wondered if she lost her keys in whatever struggle she had. Luckily, I had her spare with me. I unlocked the doors and she continued to stand outside. I realized I would need to punish my ankle a bit more because she was far too out of it to drive. I slid in, but she remained motionless. Sam, get in, please. Something's out here still, please. She was licking her lips staring back at me again. In the darkness, her blue eyes looked almost black. I limped back out of the seat and opened her door for her and had to guide her in. I buckled her in after she made no move to do so for herself. As we drove and headlights of passing cars illuminated the interior, I kept checking on her out of the corner of my eye. She was breathing in and out of her mouth and staring at me. I noticed now, in the better light, that she was drooling. Hey, uh, how are you doing? No response. But she began opening and closing her mouth and making a wet gasping sound as she breathed in and out. Her breath reeked and her teeth were tinged pink. I don't have much medical knowledge, but I was worried she had punctured lung due to the strange sound she was making. Hold tight, 
We're about 20 minutes from the hospital. Despite my ankle, I drove as fast as I could. We made it in 10. As we pulled up, I helped guide her out of the car and walked behind her, steadying her. I noticed something. Her shirt was on inside out. It hadn't been this morning. Likely because of how we looked, they found rooms for us immediately in the ER. I had a bad sprain and a concussion, and would need a few stitches. But it felt so good just to be out of those woods. I asked the nurse that came to check on me about how Sam was doing. I mentioned to him, I'm, I'm not sure if she was attacked by an animal or a person. I mentioned what I had noticed about her shirt, and that we may have encountered a sick animal in case any of that helped. When he returned, he was clearly distressed. Sam was gone. She hadn't appeared to be outwardly injured, strangely, but they had wanted to assess for internal trauma. However, the first moment that they had left her alone, she had just walked out, judging by the bloody footprints. It's been weeks and I haven't seen Sam since. Her mother hasn't either. She's been working with the police out here. They think Sam has a head wound and is just confused and will turn up in town eventually. But a few days ago, I heard on the news that a partial skeleton was found on the trail we were on. Likely the victim of an animal attack, they said. And due to the condition of the body, they were asking for leads so they could use dental records to help identify the victim. This might sound crazy, but I think it's her they found. I don't know how to explain it, but I don't think Sam ever left those woods that night. It's my fault. And I don't know what that thing was that I drove into town. If you live in southern Colorado, please be safe. I'm sorry.